Hey what's up guys welcome back. In the previous video we saw how to implement stack data structure using python. Today in this video we are going to see how to implement queue data structure using python. So queue is also a user defined data structure which works on FIFO principle. So what does FIFO mean? FIFO means first in first out. So what do you mean by that? So whenever you add an element to a queue that element is going to come out as first. So the element which is added first is going to come out as first. So let us assume that this is Q and the left side is going to be the front end in which DQ process happens. And in the right side, we are going to assume it as a back end in which NQ process happens. So what do we mean by NQ and DQ process? So whenever we add an element to a queue, then that process is called NQ process. And whenever we remove an element from a queue, then that element, then that process is called DQ process. So let's say we want to add an element to the queue. So I'm going to add two to this queue. So I'm going to add two. Since there are no elements present here, so two is going to come and stay in the first position so uh, now if we want to add another element like four it is going to come and stay behind two okay and now if i want to add eight it is going to come and stay in the third position and now if i want to add like seven it's going to stay in fourth position and if I want to add phi to the queue, it is going to stay in the fifth position. And now the final element uh, like nine, and it is going to stay in the sixth position. Okay, so now this process is called NQ process. So wh whenever we add an element to a queue, then that is basically NQ process. Now, if you want to remove an element from a queue, okay, let me increase the size of the eraser. So two was added first to the queue, and that is the element which is going to come out as come out first. So two is gone now. Now four uh, will be in the first position. So let me erase this line. Now four is in the first position. Now if I want to DQ again, four will be gone. Now eight will be in the first position. Now if I want to DQ again, eight will be gone. Now seven will be in the first position. If I remove seven again, 5 will be in the first position if i remove 5 9 will be in the first position and now if i want to dq now the queue is empty we are going to as you uh, we are going to use python's list as a placeholder so the we are going to be assuming the left side as front end and uh, a right side as back end okay so here i'm in jupyter notebook we are going to be implementing a queue using Python's class. So this class is going to have uh, six methods. So the first method is is empty method, uh, which is uh, which is basically uh, re uh, returns boolean value. Uh, where if the queue is empty, then it is going to return true. If the queue is not empty, then it is going to return false. And queue is a method to add an element to a queue. And dq is a method. Uh, to remove the element from a queue and peak will basically return the first value which is um, present in the queue it is not going to remove any elements it, it will just show you which is element uh, which element is present in the first position and length or size method will basically returns how many elements are present in the queue and display will basically display the queue all right now let's start so first things first i'm going to initialize a class called queue Okay, and now uh, I'm going to initialize a init method, also known as constructor method in other programming languages. Double underscore init, and the first parameter is going to be self. And I'm going to initialize a empty list as a placeholder. So self dot my q equals empty list. Okay, now. The first method is going to be is empty method. So def is empty. So the first parameter is self. It is not going to accept any other parameters apart from self. So I'll basically return self 
dot my q double equals empty list so if this condition turns out to be true then uh, uh, this method will return true if it is false then it will return false okay now the next method is i believe nq okay nq and this method is going to accept additional uh, parameter that is value so the value which you want to add to the queue so that's that uh, self and value so i'm going to call self dot my queue dot append and i'm going to pass this uh, value to it all right now we don't have to return anything if you would like to return something then you can return boolean value like true uh, true uh, which basically means that we have added an element to the queue okay so i'm not going to do that i'm just going to keep it simple and now the next uh, method is dq dq method and it is not going to accept any other parameters so before we uh, try to remove an element uh, it's important to check whether the queue is empty or not so for that i'll call is empty method which we implemented here earlier so is underscore empty if this condition turns out to be true then we'll simply print queue is empty okay is empty since we are uh, defining all these methods inside a class we cannot directly call a method inside a method without using self keyword so i'm going to use self dot is empty then uh, it's not going to throw error okay so if this condition turns out to be true if the queue is empty then it is going to print out queue is empty otherwise we can uh, uh, remove an element from the okay so element equals self dot my q self dot my q dot pop from the first position okay and we can return this element return element all right so that's the dq process now i think peak def peak and it is not going to accept any other any other parameter apart from self so uh, in peak also we need to check whether the queue is empty or not so i'm going to copy and paste the same code below here okay and then we can return return self dot my queue of zeroth position okay so this will return the value which is it will show the value which is present in the first position it's not going to remove that element okay so that's the difference between dq and peak method and now the length or size method def i'm going to define it as length okay length and it is not going to accept parameters so i'll uh, just simply return length of self dot my q all right so that's the length and the final method is display display and even display method is not going to accept any other parameters so it will just print the q self sorry self dot my q that's it all right so since we defined all the methods for the queue now let us initialize a variable to this queue class so i'm going to call it queue and i'm going to initialize it with this queue all right so let's run this all right so it has ran successfully so there are no errors now let us print first let us check whether the queue is empty or not it should return 
uh, set true because there are no value present inside uh, inside the queue right now so is empty so here we can see it has returned as true that's correct now let us add few elements to the queue so q dot n q I'm going to add two two and five six and let's say seven I'm going to execute this okay it has run successfully now if I call q dot is empty method then it should return as false because now the queue has four elements in it so yeah it has returned false now let us call display method q dot display and here we can see two was added first to the queue and it is present at the first position five was added second then uh, that's why the five is present at second position and six was added third that's why it's at third position and seven was added fourth uh, I mean last so that's why it's present at fourth position so that's correct now let us DQ Q dot Q dot DQ and if I execute this two should come out so here we can see two has come out now if I call display again it should have five six seven in it five six seven that's correct now I'll I'll try to DQ three times again so if I came out six should come out now yeah that's correct and now if I execute this once again seven has come out now if I try to do this one once again it is going to print out Q is empty okay because because they uh, there are no elements present in it uh, in the queue so if I do this uh, it's going to print out Q is empty and it has thrown pop uh, pop from empty list uh, don't worry about this error because the uh, this is the built-in method uh, for the list in Python since we are using uh, list uh, as a placeholder that's why it has shown that error so don't worry about it so Q is empty the uh, that's the correct output and now um, yeah we uh, forgot to check the length I'm going to uh, add few elements I mean one or two elements to it let's say this has eight and this has five and if I execute this uh, it has executed successfully now if I call length and print this it should print out three and here we can see it has printed out three because uh, now the queue has three elements in it so yeah we basically covered all the methods which we defined for the queue and that's how you implement queue data structure using python I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until next time, take care.